Hello class! For this assignment, you are going to model a tool or utensil in Maya. To show you how I might approach this problem, I'm going to model a hammer. As I model the hammer, I'll talk through the tools and techniques I'm using. I'm starting with a cylinder, and in the channel box, I have set the subdivision axis to 8. While more geometry would give me a more rounded form, I recommend starting simply. I'm selecting some of the faces on one of the caps of the cylinder, and I'm going to go to my modeling toolkit and extrude. In the pop-up, I'll add some divisions, and then in component mode, I'll select the edges and scale them in. For an assignment like this, I recommend getting good visual reference. It could be a photograph or a drawing, or in the case of what I'm doing, I actually have a hammer, which I got from down in my basement. What you see me doing here now is inserting an edge loop using the multi-cut tool. This is because I decided I wanted a little bit more geometry here to better create the form of the head of the hammer. Selecting four vertices in component mode, I'm going to square off this end of the hammer. I'm doing this based on my observations of the actual hammer that I have in front of me. With such great reference material to look at as I model, I can make lots of fine-tune adjustments to create the form of the hammerhead. I need to do another extrude to create more of the form of this hammerhead. I'm actually selecting the faces I don't want and then inverting my selection. Often this is the easiest way to select what you want. I'm now doing an extrude and adding a division. And switching over to vertex mode, I'll make some more fine-tune adjustments. Notice how I'm primarily working in the side view. However, I'm also occasionally changing over to the perspective view to get a better idea of the three-dimensional form. Most everything I do in this video is going to be review. It's stuff I've shown you in previous videos. However, what I'm about to do now is not something I've shown you yet. Take note of the edges that I have selected. With these edges selected, I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, Delete Edge Vertex. It is not recommended in this case to just use the Delete key on your keyboard. Notice that where I had triangles, I now have quads. To create the extrude that I'm about to do that will make the claw of the hammer, these quads will work better. Once again, I've returned to vertex mode and I'm just making some fine-tune adjustments based on my observation of the hammer I have in front of me. With these two faces selected, I'm going to do another extrude and I'm going to uncheck Keep Faces Together. That way I can scale them in to create the claw of the hammer. In addition, I'll add some divisions to give myself a little more geometry to shape the claw. Switching over to vertex mode, I'll go in here and make some fine-tune adjustments to get the uh, proper shape. 3D modeling is a constant process of making these fine-tune adjustments. The head of the hammer is starting to shape up pretty well. I think it's looking pretty good. I'm going to select these edges here, and I'm going to do a bevel. I'll make some adjustments, adding some divisions and adjusting the fraction. And for the most part, I think I have the hammerhead completed. I will now move on to the handle. I could just extrude faces from the hammerhead to create the handle. 
but because the hammer I have in front of me is composed of two different parts, a metal head and a wooden handle, I will create my handle from another cylinder. Again, I made my cylinder eight-sided, the reason being that working with less geometry, especially at the beginning phases when you're just roughly defining the form, makes the process easier. I will, however, add some subdivisions on the height of my cylinder. And then looking at the actual hammer that I have in front of me, I'll start to shape the handle uh, like my visual reference. For instance, looking at the handle on my hammer, I notice that it's squared off at the top of the handle. I also notice that the hammer is wider at its base. I'll switch over to edge mode and select the edges at the base of the handle and apply a bevel. Adding some divisions and adjusting the fraction will give me the desired look. There's a second thing I'd like to show you that I haven't demonstrated in a previous video yet. Notice that the handle and the hammerhead are looking very faceted. I don't really want to add more geometry to my model, however, I would like these edges to be smooth. I will select these hard-edged edges, and I will go to Mesh Display, Soften Edge. I'll also soften some of the edges on the hammer head itself. I'll now create two materials for my hammer one for the hammerhead and one for the handle. I'm going to use a blend for the hammerhead because I want it to look like metal. I want it to have specularity. I've renamed my material and then selecting the material and going to the attribute editor I will adjust its color. I will also adjust some of the properties under the specular shader category of the material. And for the handle, I'll create a Lambert, which I'll apply. Selecting my two separate meshes, the handle and the hammerhead, I'm going to go ahead and combine them in the modeling toolkit. And I will delete history, which will get rid of the unnecessary history as well as those extra nodes that I don't need anymore. In insert on my keyboard, I have moved the pivot point of the hammer so that it will rotate more from the base of the handle. And here is my completed hammer model. This video is not intended to be a recipe on how to model a hammer. As 3D modelers, you have to be problem solvers. You have to come up with your solutions to the creative and technical problems that you are confronted with. My intention with this video was merely to show you how I might approach the problem and how you can take everything that you've learned up to this point and use it creatively to model what you want. 
And one other point that I would like to make. It's one thing to create a good 3D model. It's another to make an appealing and interesting image with it. A very well modeled hammer might look kind of boring if it's just floating in an empty void. When you create your 3D models, think presentation. How can you take the model that you create and make an interesting image with it? Maybe one that even tells a story. And that does it for this video. I hope that it will be beneficial for you, and thanks for watching.